Kim Iverson was once a promising new voice in independent media a couple of years ago for like two weeks until she very quickly decided to take a sharp turn towards more reactionary oriented politics. But now she's a co-host on The Hills Rising program. And over the weekend, a clip of her on this show blew up. And as you're going to see, it blew up for very good reason. Now, I probably wouldn't have watched this clip all the way through had I not seen the responses beforehand because she is seemingly building up to a very solid point that's agreeable. Even if overall you don't necessarily agree with Kim Iverson's politics, what she is presumably going to say here makes a lot of sense. Uh, but she's going to take a very, very huge turn in an entirely different direction. And this is a plot twist that nobody expected, I don't think. And this has got to be the hottest take of 2021, even blowing out people like Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder. So as Twitter user Skeptical Spice, who shared the clip, points out, I promise you don't know where this is going. So watch it till the very end, and then you're going to see why this blew up. Look at the photos of Ethan Crumbly people on social media and some media outlets are using. He's now 15, and yet they chose this angelic-looking photo from about when he was 10. What is the purpose of this when there are several other photos, like his mugshot, that could have been shown instead? The same sort of tactic is used in reverse against black perpetrators and even victims. Rather than use their school photo of them smiling and looking like good kids, they use the meanest looking, most aggressive photo they can find on social media to portray them as villains. They attempt to portray them as people who either obviously would commit the heinous crime they did or victims who deserved it. They do this to placate a certain bias and mindset that the audience already holds. And the same looks to be happening in this case. Showing Crumbly as this innocent looking angelic white kid is intended to stoke fear and support a narrative that white people, no matter how nice they look, are domestic terrorists who should who we should all be afraid of. I don't even know how to respond to that. That plot twist would give M. Night Shyamalan a run for his money. That was certainly that was something. Wow. It, it sounds like something that the diversity equals white genocide people would say. It's just bizarre. I don't think that she has anything to worry about if her concern is this new wave of racism and negative stereotypes against white people. I don't think that that is going to happen considering most of the country is white. So I don't think this is going to be the start of a trend towards racism against white people. And she thinks that if you see that picture of a young, angelic Ethan Crumbly, you're going to think, wow. You know, if white people as innocent looking as that can be terrorists, then I should be afraid of all white people. But that's not the conclusion that most people are going to come to. When people see that picture of a young, angelic Ethan Crumbly, to use her word, they're not going to think, wow, I should be afraid of all white people. That's going to humanize the terrorist. They're going to see their son or their nephew in Ethan Crumbly. I just don't think that she really thought this through. Now, I've got to share the responses because the responses got Kim Iverson's attention and she responded and she was coping very hard. So Anna Kasparian tweeted, what the fuck? John Iderola also said, how, just how? Jeff Waldorf pointed out, wow, that twist at the end is something. Now, this got thousands and thousands of shares online. And Kim Iverson decided to address the haters, saying liberal outlets like DYT and MSNBC have spent the better part of the past five years telling people Christian white men are our nation's biggest threat, <laughs> yet people like Keith Olbermann and Anna Kasparian can't understand my conclusion on this. And then she responds to Anna Kasparian, the photo used for the shooter is meant to support the narrative you've created in people's minds. Christian white males are terrorists, no matter how angelic they look. Right. We understand the point that you're trying to make. You don't have to reiterate it. We're telling you that the point that you're making is stupid and we don't agree with it. In fact, it's such a bad take that the entire Internet is laughing at you. So uh, I want to play a second clip here because she goes on to kind of further explain her reasoning here, just to be fair to her. Um, and then I'll respond when we come back. So I think this is going to be another case, kind of like Kyle Rittenhouse, where now, look, this guy's guilty. I think it's really obvious from all the evidence that we're seeing that this guy was is, is very, very guilty, very different than the Kyle Rittenhouse case as far as the actual facts, but how they'll use it to fuel a narrative or a discussion or to demonize others. This isn't about Ethan Crumbly. Uh, whether or not people want to call him a terrorist, that has nothing to do with him. It really has to do with this narrative that we're facing this white domestic terrorism in this country. This is our big problem, and we've got to do something to stop it. 
and that stopping it has nothing to do with Ethan Crumbly. It will affect other people. And that is what I'm most afraid of on this. So ultimately, she doesn't like that it supports the narrative that white domestic terrorists are the biggest problem. Now, sure, I can understand why you would be concerned with this, because perhaps this might lead to more NSA spying or a crackdown on civil liberties, more broadly speaking, if this is a narrative that's pushed since white people make up the majority of the population still. But overall, I don't think that that's the full point that she's making. Maybe that's a part of it. But ultimately, it seems like she's more concerned with the demonization of white people. But the problem with her argument is that even if she doesn't like this narrative that white domestic terrorism is our biggest problem, I mean, when it comes to terrorism, it's a fact that white domestic terrorists do account for most terror attacks in the United States. But the reason why people point that out isn't to demonize white people unnecessarily. It's to suggest maybe we shouldn't demonize others. Maybe we shouldn't demonize Muslims or other perceived domestic terror threats when the far right in America is the ones who are increasingly radicalized. They're increasingly the ones doing the most violence in the United States. Therefore, rather than demonizing other races and scapegoating them, maybe we should be introspective and look within and figure out who the biggest threats are if we're going to demonize anyone. <laughs> Saying that as a white person does not make me racist against white people. To think that is deeply unserious and stupid. But this isn't the first time that Kim Iverson had a very hot take, I guess you could say, when it comes to race issues, because as Twitter user Escover points out, in 2019, Kim Iverson tweeted that the USA is one of the least racist countries and that racism is a distraction from the real issues. Now, I believe that's when she was just starting out on YouTube and the second she got pushed back, that's immediately when she began her pivot towards Dave Rubinism. And I think she even tweeted at Dave Rubin to get on his show because she was being canceled. Probably not the word that she used by by leftists who are woke or something like that. And now if you look at her page, you can see that she has joined, uh, I believe, Rumble and Locals, which is Dave Rubin's platform. And all of her timeline, it's just nothing but anti-vaccine nonsense. And it looks like a typical right wing reactionary's Twitter timeline. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's really sad. I was hoping that at some point Kim Iverson would come to her senses and she would maybe be a little bit more nuanced in her thinking and stop thinking in such a sloppy um, reactionary way, but this take is, uh, it's, yeah, it's an indication that she's not changing anytime soon. She's still pandering to radicals, uh, on the right. Now, if you're wondering why so many people take this Dave Rubin trajectory and they start out as a progressive and then they pivot towards more right-wing reactionary politics, it's because that's where the money's at. Perhaps people are just genuinely reactionary. I'm not saying that Kim Iverson doesn't believe the things that she's saying, although I hope she doesn't because they're very stupid, uh, but this is how you get the biggest audience. You pander to people on the right and also left adjacent people who are anti-establishment but maybe sucked into some elements of reactionary politics. And that's how you grow your audience. That's how you get more popular. You know, it's more lucrative to pander to people on the far right and some people marginally on the left than it is to just pander to right wingers or left wingers. So this is why you see a lot of people who are ideologically incoherent, like, you know, Joe Rogan, like uh, now Jimmy Dore is one of them, Dave Rubin, except now he's a full right winger. But this is why you see people making the shift. It's because that's where the money's at. That's where the audience is at. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's paying off for Kim Iverson because she now has a gig at the Hill. But I mean, if she's going to drop takes like this more frequently, I'm going to have to tune in because Jesus Christ, that was uh, entertaining, albeit for the saddest reason possible, but it was entertaining nonetheless. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 